After you've got the core point of your video, what is it you're trying to do? The next thing to think of is how are you going to structure it? How are you going to put it together? And the way you think about that is to think what kind of video am I making? This is what's called genre, the genre. That is, what type of video is it? And you know there are many genres in the world. Let's take a look at Wiki. And if we look over at Wiki, we can see there are many genres. This is a list of genres. And you can see we have things such as action, adventure, comedy. In fact, maybe when you go to the library or you, you go online to Netflix to watch a video, this is how they give you the different video topics. They divide it up by genre. And boy, this list can get really long, can it? Mystery, philosophical, political. We have animation, which are like cartoons, live action. These are big genres. You have small genres. You have genres inside of genres, right? Because you can be an animation, but you can also be a music. You can be animation, you can also be a thriller, and you can also be a comedy all together. So all of these things can get all mixed up in what kind of genre it is. Boy, that is one long, long list. So, how do you know what genre you're in? Well, in my class, for example, for my students, I give them an assignment, and that assignment is in a genre. So let's take a look at, at a couple of those. Genre right there, training or trade. That means they need to make a video to train someone. These are very common videos. It's, a, it's, a, it's you know something that every company needs to make video to help train their uh, new employees. So a training is a genre. Now, it could be a different kind of genre inside of there. For example, oh, I could do a training video and it's a training genre and I use adventure. So it's an adventure genre also. So, you know, it gets really confusing. But uh, stick with me for a minute so we can figure this out. Another project we do is an issue commercial. That is, they need to choose a, an issue such as a political or social issue and then they need to create a kind of commercial to wear, uh, raise awareness or, or tell the audience, the target audience, what to do. Another type of video my students do in their projects is an entrepreneurial product or an investment video. Maybe you've seen these online for Kickstarter or Indiegogo where people are trying to raise money to create a product or make a new product. And so they make a video for that product. It's a kind of promotional, entrepreneurial uh, kind of uh, video. And of course, another one is the PSA, which is called Public Service Announcement. And this is when you watch television or you're online and there's a commercial and it's trying to help the public raise awareness how to do something right, like don't waste electricity or, or be careful of a fire or make sure that you know, you don't waste gas, or you don't leave your lights on, or you don't smoke. These are public service announcements, or PSA. So those are the genres I assign in class, and those are very clear kind of, clear-cut genres. But then how you execute them inside can include another genre inside. And we're going to see examples from my students in, in later videos to see how they execute that. You could use humor, you could use action, you could use a kind of music video genre. There are many approaches. So how can you use this to get started? If, if, the, if your teacher hasn't told you you must make a PSA genre, how do, you, how do you get started? Well, the reason this is helpful is once you have your idea, your goal, then what you can do is you can think, now what genre do I want to make this in? And then you can go find videos that use that genre and see what do they do. 
how do they do it? So if you're going to use a PSA, public service announcement in that genre, or a training video in that genre, I can go watch some PSAs, or I can go watch some training videos. And I can see, oh, in a training video, they often have a one person who introduces things, and then they often have a list of things you need to follow. In a PSA, they often use emotion and try to tell you, don't, don't do something because it's scary, so I can follow that. Do they use music? Do they cut very quickly? Do they use different kinds of angles or different kinds of shots? How many people are involved in the video? Do they use a lot of graphics? All of these relate to the genre. And how do you know how to do it? By following the example. So what we have here is the genre is kind of a way to cheat. Once you think my video is going to be in this genre, comedy, now you can go watch comedy videos. Or mine is going to be a training genre, but using comedy genre. And I can go try to find some training videos that use comedy. And I can copy what they've done. I can follow what they've done. It's a great way to save trouble and get a head start on things, rather than you just make things up. And then if you make things up, different parts of your video is coming up different, and you'll get discouraged easily. So genre is a way to cheat, I shouldn't say cheat, shortcut. A shortcut to seeing how to execute your goal, your, your elevator pitch, how to execute it in the actual video. Okay, let's go off to the hardware table. Okay, we're at the hardware table and what are we looking at today? Well, what's the thing I've been talking about in hardware a lot? That's the sound, right? The microphone. We've talked about the sound in, we've talked about listening to the sound, monitoring the sound. But you know, one thing we've kind of skipped over, and we've said, hey, you can get this really good stuff like a, like a shotgun mic on top of your SLR camera, or maybe you can have a nice microphone that someone can hold and you have an XLR connection. But you know, it's very possible that you may be in a situation where the camera you're using doesn't have any way to get the sound in. For example, I have my Android phone. I only have a, a mini USB there. How am I gonna get a micro USB actually? How am I gonna get sound in? Well, I could buy an adapter, but maybe my phone doesn't have that kind of adapter. Or maybe it's too expensive and I don't wanna spend the money. Or maybe I want to make videos more than just once, so I would like to have a solution that can work for different phones, different cameras. Well, here's what you can do. You can buy a recorder and record the sound separately from your video. That's an interesting idea. You don't actually need to have the sound go into the camera. Now, of course, it helps because it saves a lot of trouble. But you could record the video and record the sound separately. Then when you put it onto your computer, you just put the sound together. You've seen in the movies where they have the big board and they say, action! And they use that clapper. Action! Chick! What does that do? That's because they're recording the video and the sound separately. And by seeing the video and when the clapper closes, and then on the sound you can hear the chink, you can hear the close, then on the video editor you can align those two together. Sometimes you don't have a clapper, I don't have one here today, but people often do what? They say, ready, action. And by doing this, on the video you can see your hands, and you can hear the sound on the audio and you can line them up in your editor. That's a great way to do it. Now, what's the advantage of having an external recorder? Here's an, here's an example of an external recorder here. There are many different brands. You can get them from Sony, Panasonic. This one is Zoom. Now, you may say, well, I don't really need that because you know what? 
I could use one phone to record the video, and I can use another phone to record the audio, couldn't I? And sometimes you'll see people doing this, even news people sometimes on the news. You'll see them holding their phone up to the person they're interviewing because they're recording the sound. So they'll be doing this, talking like this into the phone. Well, that's not a great idea because I can tell you the microphone quality on these machines is really bad. Even if you're holding it up here, it's terrible. Not to mention if you're holding a little bit further away. Really, really horrible. That's not going to work too good. So let's look at a better solution that you could use over time if you needed it. And that's a portable recorder like this. Got it in its case here, so let me pop it out of its case. There we go. Uh, there we are. Okay. Now, a recorder like this has some advantages. The big advantage right away you can see are the microphones. These are very good, high quality microphones. These are two microphones, so you can record in stereo. Even the way the microphones are positioned, which to you may look, hey, this is really funny, right? It looks kind of strange. The reason for that is they can capture sound from different directions and try to cancel out noise and interference. So just the design is very professional. Now, how do you get sound in? Well, those microphones. But you're gonna have to hold those microphones pretty close to the person who's speaking again just like a regular microphone, and closer is better. Closer is better. And I think I should remind you that when you do get close, you should always have a windscreen. And here we have a little foam here. Uh-huh, we put that foam on there. Ooh, there you go, that's pretty. And now we have a windscreen so that if I blow air on it, it won't make that big sound. So that's really useful. But do you really want to do this? Well, you could probably get a little bit further away. If you were inside of a room, you might be able to get this just off camera, maybe, but you'd have to be inside a quiet room. If you were outside where there's sound all around, that's not going to work very well. If you're outside, you're going to have to go back to your shotgun microphone or your tie clip microphone, which may work if there's no wind. But you know what? No problem, because this machine can also handle these kinds of microphones. And that's what's really good about this kind of portable recorder. If I turn the recorder upside down, you can see it has two jacks there. And if I take the XLR microphone line, I can plug that into either one of these like that. So that's the XLR going into there. And in fact, this could take two. Why two? Because this is mono. This is just one line. So I could put in a right side and a left side and have stereo. I also have mic in right here. You have line in and mic in. So you actually could take another microphone line and put that in just like that. You could have a tie clip mic on a long line and you put it in here. Or you could also be using your remote wireless microphone and plug it into here. So this kind of machine is great. You can put any mic in it. And it's really useful because in the future you can use this with any other camera. So you can have two or three cameras, you can have phone cameras, have any kind of camera, and you just do your audio recording on this, and it's gonna sound as good as your mic is. If you have a good mic, it'll sound great. And it has its own mics, which do sound great. So that's a win-win situation, really good. Now, the only downside is that these are not always cheap. They're not super expensive, you can get pretty good prices, and there are different models from different companies. But that is one solution you can have and then you don't need to worry about plugging into your camera, fitting it into your camera. Another thing you can have is, this can be another person uses this while you're 
manipulating the camera. So I'm the cameraman and somebody else is going to be the sound man. That is a great way to do your production because the sound person can just pay attention to the sound. And remember, they're also going to put on their headphones and they're going to listen to the sound that's coming into this machine and it has a monitoring jack right here. Yep, Head, uh, phones, it says so right there. I can plug those in and I could go ahead and listen to the sound that's coming in. So that's really maximizing the situation. The only downside is a little bit pricey and also you need to put it into your editor and then you need to line up the sound and the picture, all right? One more time, I'm on the sound again. I'm just gonna repeat myself. Sound is more important than video. Picture takes a back seat to that audio. You really need the good quality audio to keep your audience's attention. Good luck on your audio recording.